Chairman, I call to order the April 14, 2015 meeting of the Oshkosh Common Council. I want to welcome those of you that are here in the Council Chamber to the Council Chamber tonight. I also want to welcome those who might be watching us on Channel 10, those who might be watching on their computers, those who might be listening on their computers, those who might be listening on the radio. We, this is your city government, and we hope you'll participate in whatever way works for you. So welcome to all. Okay, we're going to skip one item here and come back to it later, the introduction. So I'm going to go to the roll call, have the clerk take the roll of the council members. Pansky? Here. Fitzgerald? Here. Cummings? Here. Peck? Here. Herman? Here. Allison Osby? Tower? Here. Present, six. Okay, I'm going to ask all to rise for the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> you would? Invocation will be by council member Pansky. We come together this evening to discuss the issues that confront our city. May we always seek the wisdom to do things that reflect our concern for the people whom we represent. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Ask our students to turn around, look out here if you would, please. <coughs> <clears throat> we do appreciate the two of you taking time coming down here today. I understand at least one of you has soccer practice tonight or something. You have soccer <laughs> practice. So we'll get you out of here pretty quickly. Uh, folks would like to learn a little bit about you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the microphone down. And why don't each one of you introduce yourself. Tell us where you go to school, what grade you're in, and uh, I'll say your name also. And then let us know... Uh, what it is that you like to do best in Oshkosh, or what do you like best about Oshkosh? Okay. Um, my name is Ethan Selzer. I go to Webster Stanley Middle School, and I'm in eighth grade. Um, the thing I like most about Oshkosh is, I would say, going to Menominee Park, because there's so much stuff to do there. You can bike, play soccer, go to the tennis courts. There's a lake, so you can do many things there, too. My, na my name is Clara Stelzer. I'm, I go to Webster Stanley, and I'm in fifth grade. And the thing I like about Oshkosh is you c Lake Winnebago, how you can sail there, swim there, and play on the beach and things like that. Well, good. Again, we do appreciate two of you coming. I've got a brother-sister combination here at night, in case you didn't figure that out already, uh, who, who speak up well. I do have a certificate for each one of you and, and, and an appreciation for what you're doing. Ethan? yours. Clara, there's yours. If we could have a hand. <laughs> yeah, you two can take off, do whatever. Clara, you can get the, the soccer practice. I'm sure they need you. I guess actually the next thing I have on here is a proclamation. have some people here from Advocap. I'd appreciate it if they'd come up with me here. And I'll read the proclamation. Stand here and look out like we had our students look out so everybody can see who you are, <laughs> what you're doing. Okay, I'll read the proclamation first of all. Proclamation, whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges. And whereas the nation's mayors are increasingly turning to national service and volunteerism as a cost-effective strategy to meet city needs. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and counties, from educating students for the jobs of the 21st century and supporting veterans and military families to providing health services and helping communities recover from natural disasters. And whereas national service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps participants serve in more than 60,000 locations across the country, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being. And whereas national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve with, both through their direct <laughs> service and by recruiting and managing millions of additional volunteers. And whereas national service 
represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return on taxpayer dollars. And whereas national service participants demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to service, a commitment that remains with them in their future endeavors. And whereas the Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with the National League of Cities, City of Service, and mayors across the country, they recognize the impact of service on Mayor's Day recognition for national service, which is this past April 7, 2015. Now, therefore, I, Burke Tower, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, proclaimed April 7, 2015 as National Service Recognition Day and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city and to thank those who serve and to find ways to give back to their communities. So what I'd like to do is present the proclamation to you. Maybe each one of you could introduce yourself, say a few words. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Mayor Tower, members of the City Council. Um, we're, we're honored that you have, um, have made this proclamation. Um, it is about volunteerism. Uh, the Corporation for National Service, which is one of the programs that we work with, um, uh, deals with volunteerism and we we thank you for honoring those volunteers they are a, a key portion of the city um, this is uh, my name is Mike Bonertz by the way I'm the executive director of Advocap and this is Deb Tower who runs the volunteer service program like Mike said my name is Deb Tower I'm the director of volunteer services I manage two um, national programs the retired and senior volunteer program as well as the foster grandparent program we support just shy of 275, 275 volunteers here in Winnebago County. So we are making a great impact. And thank you so much, Mayor Tower. I'm Doug Pearson, Community Relations Manager with Advocap. I would want to thank the city today for recognizing Advocap's Volunteer Services Program. Uh, we value our partnership with the city and uh, uh, hope it will continue for many, many years and many, many more ways. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> thank you for your service. We appreciate it. I'm going to go backwards in the agenda. Normally we move forward, but I'm going to go backwards just a little bit. We have a couple of introductions. We have some new people in the community uh, who we're looking forward to working with, uh, working with various groups throughout the community. We're working through Go EDC, and I'm going to ask the city manager to introduce the, the two individuals. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce really to the community because I think most of the council members, if not all of you, have had a chance to, to meet these individuals at. Uh, one of the Go EDC uh, kickoff meetings, but uh, to introduce the community to Jason White, he's the new chief executive officer for Go EDC. Jason, if you could stand, and Aaron Sutton, uh, the new communications manager for Go EDC. Um, I say new; they're actually the first of each of uh, each of those uh, positions. But uh, Jason comes to us from Iowa, where he was with the Warren County Iowa Economic Development Corporation, and Aaron was with the Fish Creek uh, Civic Association. So they're sort of like they're their uh, business improvement district. So uh, they both come with experience in economic development. Um, Jason's been running all over town today, and I think he was probably corrupted by Mr. Wyman next to him at a, <laughs> at a <laughs> chamber social event. Um, but uh, getting uh, Jason out in the community to, to meet uh, the business community, and uh, we had actu actually had a meeting, and I think both Aaron and Jason were busy today assisting uh, a local business client, and that's what this is about. And we're excited to have them on board and wanted to introduce them to the community as well as uh, to the council uh, this evening. Good. Welcome. 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 Also, I just want to make a comment. Mr. Wyman's there. Mr. Wyman, if you just stand up just for a second. Uh, <laughs> because you brought him late, you're getting scolded. <laughs> That's not the reason I asked you to stand up. Uh, Bill Wyman um, really was, was the interim CEO 
for Go EDC. Helped us get up things started, plus helped recruit both of these individuals. So, Bill, we thank you for your service. I know you're continuing with Go EDC, but we do appreciate what you've done in getting the organization up and going and getting these two individuals involved. Well, I think they'll do great, and we couldn't have done it without this, the council's support. So thank you. <coughs> thank you. Thank you all. Okay, we'll move on in the agenda. The next thing on the agenda is citizen statements to the council. This is when citizens have an opportunity to come forward, and if there's something that's going on well in the city and you'd like to comment on it, you please feel free to mention that. If you have a particular concern about something going on in the city, uh, we'd ask you to, to mention that. Uh, there are a few rules that we have. One is we want your name and your address. We also want you to limit your comments to no more than five minutes. Speak directly to the council if you would. We'd appreciate that. Uh, no electioneering at this point in time. I think the elections are over for now, at least, at least locally. Uh, so. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I appreciate that. My name is Walter Scott, and I have with me Sue Ponick, and Tom Grogan is, <laughs> Sue is with me over here, okay, and Tom Grogan, uh, who is a <coughs> photographer over there. We represent the Oshkosh Civility Project, uh, which has been going about four years in the community now, and we thought tonight <coughs> was a perfect time to present a plaque to someone who's always presenting plaque, and someone who's represented civility in his time as mayor of the council. So, Burke, if you would come forward, please, you're going to get a plaque. <laughs> Sue, would you please present this to Burke? And, and while you're doing that, I will be glad to read what the plaque says. Will, please? <coughs> Citation for special recognition as a champion of civility presented to Burke Tower as mayor of the city of Oshkosh. Dr. Tower has consistently demonstrated adherence to the principles, the practices, and the promise of civility. In doing so, he has attracted public support for the city and improved the environment for living, learning, and working in Oshkosh. Generous in his time and unfailing in his commitment to civic growth and advancement, Dr. Tower is representative of the high standards of interpersonal communication and conduct that make Oshkosh known for our shared commitment to civility. Presented this in Oshkosh this 14th day of April. Thank you, Bert. <laughs> unexpected and very kind. Uh, I appreciate that. I think it's wise for all to know that are here in the community. The council has taken civility oath and we're part of the civility project and if you look behind Mr. Cornell who's going to come up and speak next you'll actually see the civility information there on the wall. We keep that up there to keep that in mind as we conduct our meetings and move forward with our business. Mr. Bob Cornell. Cornell 548 West Smith. I I'm happy that snow and the ice are gone and I'm vertical so I could come here and pester you once again. A couple of things on my mind. The first is a, a sincere thank you to Mr. Fitzgerald and Mayor Tower for your, your time and service. Uh, you've given up your time and your talent and a lot of people think this is a one and a half hour job every two weeks and of course those of us that serve on board and commissions know a lot more than that. There's a lot of research, there's a lot of dedication, and a lot of time spent preparing, not only for this meeting, but many others. So as, as a citizen and a taxpayer, thank you both for the time you've put in here, helping to make Oshkosh a better place to live. Thank you. Thank you. The, the second item is in reference to the uh, uh, state of the city. Uh, there was uh, recommendations and commitments made, or not necessary, I think they were commitments, the two organizations, one was the Friends of the Oshkosh Senior Center, and the other one was to the North High School group that puts the students out into the community and provide service that I think I find remarkable. Uh, for, for, let's go back to the Friends to start. Uh, as you all know, I've been a supporter and advocator of the Friends for many, many years and will continue to do so. I sincerely believe that's the best $20 you can spend to become a friend of the center. Uh, the other one is the relationship of students of the North High School to seniors. I think both Mr. Cummings and I can testify that when we graduated from Seniors Connect, uh, we understood the relationship that these students are willing to put their time and talent in helping us old goats learn technology. 
Uh, we stepped through uh, iPads, we stepped through Chromebooks, we went <coughs> through Nooks and Kindles, and it was just a great relationship. And I found it amazing that I could match up <coughs> an 18-year-old female with an 85-year-old gentleman, I'm going to put it that way, and we had just a greatly great social relationship, and not only from a technology, but I learned many things from her that on my equipment I never knew I had the capability of using. And the thing that touched me the most was at our luncheon and our final day, uh, students and seniors were asked to make a comment. And she made a comment that I think at my age brought a tear to my eye because she said, I came here to help a senior, but I'm walking away because I made a friend. And to hear that from an 18-year-old, to me, is just fantastic. And it's not only with the senior connects that these kids give their time and talent, but they're out there doing many things within the community. And it kind of erases some of the bad things that you hear about the minority that are either getting into trouble and not supporting uh, the schools and their, their ambitions. And believe me, they are ambitious. Uh, one other item, city related. Uh, during the winter, I've had a number of opportunities to drive down Sawyer. And since the bike lane was in there, uh, I had concerns every time I drove down it. First of all, it's a 25 mile speed limit. I'd say the average speed is 33 to 35. Uh, in the winter when there's snow along the parking lane, which reduces that space, and people are impatient, not realizing there's only a one lane road there. So if they're in a hurry, they'll pass on the right and they'll use the bicycle lane and the parking lane if obviously there's no car park there. And this concerns me because th we're talking a safety issue. And I realize in the winter there's not going to be anybody in those bicycle lanes, but now we're coming into the season where it could be very serious <coughs> and could be a tragedy. I don't know how we can educate the people that use that street that it is only a one-lane road north and south and let the bicycle people do their thing and the people that are parking use the lane that's for them. But it is a, it is a I think, concern, and I hope it, uh, in the future it does not become anything more serious. Thank you, Mr. Cornell. It is bicycle season. Ms. Pansky noted that, I believe, today on Facebook. Also, the same, the same <coughs> thing. So, it is bicycle season, so we need to be get, become a little more careful and cognizant of what's going on. Okay, that takes us to the consent agenda. The consent agenda is made up of a, a number of items the administration feel are non-controversial in nature. And as such, they're presented as a package. And the way we're going to handle this is I'm going to go through and read each one. If anybody here would like to comment on any particular one, as I read that item, I'd appreciate it if you come up to the microphone, which is open. Once we've completed that process, I'll bring it back to the council for some questions, discussion, and then a, a motion for approval. Also, if anybody would like, either a citizen or a council member, to remove any item from the consent agenda, all they have to do is ask, and it'll be done right away, and then we'll consider those items separately. Okay, I'll begin the reading. Approval of bills presented by the finance director. Receipt and filing of common council minutes for March 24, 2015. Receipt of claims filed with the city's insurance company. One from Lynn Ryman for alleged damages from the police department. A second, ACCU Properties, LLC, Water Igler, uh, for alleged damages from a water leak in front of property. Resolution 15-163, approved professional service agreement with Associated Financial Group for <coughs> benefit consulting services. Resolution 15-164, award bid for flooring replacement for the Oshkosh Public Library to H.G.J. Martin & Son, Inc. Resolution 15-165, award bid for one ton for uh, wheel drive crew cab truck for street division to L&S Truck Center and stainless steel dump body hoist and hydraulic system to Monroe Truck Equipment. Resolution 15-166, award bid for Stevens Park Restroom, Shelter Construction for Parks Department to Cardinal Construction, Inc. Resolution 15-167, award bid for Riding Tractor Mower for Parks Department to Reenders, Inc. Resolution 15-168, approval of change order number one for Public Works Contract, number 14-03, with Rel Relico. Uh, Inc. for the National Armory Area Stormwater Detention Basin. Resolution 15-169, approved purchase of manhole inlet castings for Public Works Department. Resolution 15-170, 
approval of amendment to agreement for engineering services with AECOM for environmental engineering and construction material testing for the Public Works Field Operation Facility, Phase 3. Resolution 15-171, approval of agreement for engineering services with CH2M Hill Engineers, Inc. for 2015 Wastewater Collection System Sewer Evaluation and Capacity Assurance Plan at CCAP and Capacity Management Operation Maintenance, CMOM, Plan Program Services. Resolution 15-172, approve professional service agreement with Tyler Technologies, Inc. for enterprise resource planning, CRP software package. Uh, Mr. Mayor? Yep. I would like to speak about this resolution. The, uh, the, the ERP one? The, the 172. Oh, 172, okay. Uh, 15172. <clears throat> right. Um, which is in regards to the, to, to the new, uh, proposed new uh, uh, financial management uh, administrator system. Got a couple of clarification questions, I guess. Uh, in the memo, it says that the uh, initial implementer date is January 1st, uh, 2016, and the full implementer uh, date is in the summer of 2017. And I was just wondering if uh, I could get a, a quick explanation what that is. Because uh, I guess what, what I'm uh, 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 confused about is what 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 really is going to happen on the first of January, 2016? Is is uh, is that saying that part of the system will be up and up, uh, operating or or what? And I, 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 I got a couple of other questions too. Maybe I could ask the questions and then. <coughs> okay. Do you want to go ahead and ask your other questions, and we'll see if we can answer them. So hopefully we'll okay, keep thank this you. in a limited time period here. Right. Um, John, want to come on up so you're ready? The, the, the other, other, other question I guess I'm just going to ask is that uh, is this system going to to uh, do the utility accounting financial records also? And I guess those are two questions I want to ask tonight. John, you can respond to those. <clears throat> sure, I'd be happy to. Um, the answer to the question is yes and yes and yes. They are, uh, it's going to take a while for us to go through the training process and also for the full implementation. And because there are multiple software systems that we're going to be implementing, it's going to take a phased approach. And it's really more than financial systems. There's a variety of different computing systems that we have in the city that are going to have the capability to communicate with each other now. And that's the concept behind the enterprise resource uh, system. So in, in in response to the question, the first question, it's uh, it will take a while for us to fully implement all the programs and get them fully operational. So that's that's the reason for the phased approach. <coughs> and in response to the second question about utility accounting, that is also going to be part of this process. There's a whole variety of systems that will be implemented over a over a, an extended period of time. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else like to speak? <coughs> okay, that takes us to resolution 15-173. Approved purchase pursuant to State of Wisconsin Cooperative Purchase with SHI International Corporation for Microsoft Software Licenses. Resolution 15-174, accept dedication of street right-of-way for Wapan Road adjacent to 4233 Wapan Road. Resolution 15-175, authorized submittal of Department of Natural Resources Stewardship Grant Application for Riverwalk Improvements on Morgan District property adjacent to Boatwork Riverwalk. Resolution 15-176, approved conditional use permit for development of brewery, taproom, sales area at 611 Oregon Street and associated parking and dumpster enclosure 213 West 7th Avenue. Resolution 15-177, approve fund balance reservations. Resolution 15-178, approve reduction of state correctional staff positions and the closing of prison towers in the city of Oshkosh. It's been asked that that be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately, so we will do so. Okay, now I'm going to go through a number of special events. We've got lots of them coming up as we approach the summertime, so I won't say special event each time. Resolution 15-179, 
Pretty Little Drivers, riders to utilize a Rochelle Park for their Pretty Little Drivers, riders TGIF meets April 17, 2015 through October 16, 2015. Resolution 15-180, Oshkosh Bird Fest Committee utilize Menominee Park for their Oshkosh Bird Fest May 2, 2015. Resolution 15-181, Dream Jewelers, Planet, Perk, Trillium, Salon, to utilize Commerce Street for their shop local Oshkosh kickoff, saluting our local heroes, May 4, 2015. Resolution 15-182, UWO, Women's Center, to utilize City Streets for their Walk a Mile on Her Shoes, May 6, 2015. Resolution 15-183, Jefferson PTO and safety team to utilize Minnesota Street for their Jefferson Bike Rodeo <coughs> Community Event, May 14, 2015. Resolution 15-184, Molly McGuire's to utilize 539 Campus Place for their graduation beer garden, May 15, 2015. Resolution 15-185, Kelly's Bar to utilize 219 Wisconsin Street for their graduation beer garden, May 15 and 16, 2015. Resolution 15-186, Oshkosh Garden Club to utilize front grounds of Oshkosh Public Museum for their Oshkosh Garden Club plant sale, May 16, 2015. Resolution 15-187, Paint Arts Center and Gardens to utilize Congress Avenue for their Festival of Spring, May 16, 2015. Resolution 15-188, Oaklawn PTO and Safety Team to utilize Viola Street for their Oaklawn Community Bike Rodeo, May 19, 2015. Resolution 15-189, CLIC Foursquare Church to utilize Menominee Park for their CLIC Softball Tournaments, May 23, 2015 and September 5, 2015. Resolution 15-190, Larry Mead to utilize South Park for his reading of names on war. Monument, May 25, 2015. Resolution 15-191. <coughs> Oshkosh Patriotic Council to utilize Riverside Park, City Streets, and Riverside Cemetery for their Memorial Day procession and services, May 25, 2015. Resolution 15-192. I think it should be Payne Art Center and Gardens to utilize Congress Avenue for their Fair on the Green, July 12, 2015. Resolution 15-193, Waterfest Inc. to utilize Leach Amphitheater for Waterfest Concert Series, August 7, 2015. Resolution 15-194, National MS Society, Wisconsin Chapter to utilize city sidewalks for their walk, MS Oshkosh, September 13, 2015. Resolution 15-195, approve appointment to the Library Board. Resolution 15-196, disallowance of claim by Lynn Reimer. Resolution 15-197, disallowance of claim by Karen Steinecke. Resolution 15-198, approval of combination Class B license, combination Class A license, premise transfer for combination Class B license, <coughs> secondhand dealer license, special Class B licenses and operator licenses. That brings me to the end. One more chance to come up and comment on any of those. Seeing no one come forward, I bring it back to the council for any questions, comments, or polling of items. We will pull resolution 15-178 for separate consideration, so we'll save that. Um, Mr. Herman <coughs> asked it, that that be pulled, and I will. Okay, other questions, comments, or polling of anything? Nothing? Anything on the consent agenda? Okay, I'll ask for a motion to pass the consent agenda as presented, minus 15-178. So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Second. second. Any other comments or questions on the consent agenda, minus 15-178? Okay, I ask the clerk to take the full <coughs> call vote on the consent agenda, minus 15-178. Jansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Pat? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, we did have one resolution pulled from the agenda. Uh, that's resolution-178, <coughs> approves the reduction of state correction no staff positions and the closing of prison towers in the city <coughs> of Oshkosh. Mr. Herman asked that it be pulled, so I assume he has some comments. Thank you, Mayor Tower. Yes, I do. Um, 
I think I have a gentleman that contacted me who was a correction officer for the state of Wisconsin. He had concerns about the <coughs> closing of the prison towers, not only here in Oshkosh, but statewide. And um, I think it's as important as, as the, the resolution we did supporting the UW Oshkosh and the budget cuts. Um, we have a lot of state facilities in Oshkosh, not only the Oshkosh Correctional Institute, but the Wisconsin Resource Center, uh, Winnebago Mental Health, Gordon Hall, uh, the camp. Um, and the state constantly is cutting money to those facilities and those things, and they not only affect the prison system, but they affect Oshkosh. It affects um, people's livelihoods. Uh, they may have to move out of the, the community, so that affects the economic uh, impact of those types of things. So I think it's important that we take a stand that um, we support um, making sure that our prisons are safe. Um, yes, it's third shift, and everybody thinks, and I know from my days at the Sheriff's Office that third shift is not always the safest time. And um, I think the eyes in the towers are important, and that's why I brought this resolution forward. And there's someone here to speak on behalf of that. So you want him to speak at this time? I wish you yes. would have spoken before when I had that, that opportunity. Go ahead. I'll give you that opportunity now, since you probably talked to Mr. Herman before. I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, my name is Trent Ventura. Um, I uh, am a resident of the city of Oshkosh. Uh, I've been with the Department of Corrections for uh, 29 years. Uh, I've worked at numerous uh, correctional facilities throughout my career. I've been at uh, Kettle Moraine, Dodge Correctional Institution, Winnebago Correctional Institution, Osh Oshkosh Correctional. Um, I'm the union president out at uh, Oshkosh Correctional Institution. Oshkosh Correctional Institution is the largest uh, prison in the state. It currently houses uh, uh, our average capacity there is uh, 2,055 inmates that we uh, house there. And um, they, uh, the governor's budget wants to close down the towers on third shift. Um, which is a serious concern, should be a concern for all the uh, residents of the city of uh, Oshkosh. You, you don't want to be closing, closing down these towers. They say there's never been an incident, and the reason why there's never been an incident is because you've always had human element up in the towers. You've always had people up in the towers with weapons, with rifles, with shotguns, which was the deterrent, which stopped prisoners from breaching that fence. That's the last line of defense, which keeps the prisoners from wanting to escape. You remove that element, and then you're going to have incidents happening, and you're going to have people breaching that fence. So you don't want to remove the last line of, of defense there. That's going to be a serious mistake. And. Um, not only that, you take away uh, people sitting up in those towers and you look at uh, like Oshkosh, what's going to be coming flying over the fence? You know, uh, it's, it's a big institution. I mean, um, inside of Oshkosh, uh, the interior, you got 96 acres there. Um, the perimeter road around there is 1.5 miles around there. And if you only got one vehicle roaming around there, how long does it take for that vehicle to go around? And then what are we going to have coming flying over that, that fence at night when you don't have anybody up in those towers? We're going to have drugs coming over there. You're going to have alcohol coming over there. You're going to have weapons coming over there. You know, if you don't have anybody up in those towers to watch, you're going to have all sorts of contraband. Look at, look at drones today. You know, you got drones that can just come flying in there. You take the human element out of there, Who's going to be watching that fence? You can't take away that last line of defense. You know, that's going to be a, you got to protect the citizens of Oshkosh. Then not only do you got to do that, you got to protect the people working inside that correctional facility. You know, the numbers are against us when we're working inside the facility. On third shift, um, the numbers are staggering. We run with 42 staff on third shift in the correctional facility. So if you close down five more towers, you know, because they're going to keep tower one open, you close down five more towers and you're running with just 37 staff. And then you got 2,055 inmates, 
you do your math, that's a 1 to 55 ratio. Then you don't have anybody up in those towers. And if you got a major disturbance or a major incident that's happening, and if for some reason you got to run away and you got to evacuate and you got to go run to some place to get help, like the towers where the weapons are, you know, this isn't Hollywood. We don't have weapons. We don't have guns inside the fence. We don't have anything. The only thing we carry on us is OC spray. That's it. So our only protection are those towers. That's our line, last line of defense. So you got to protect the people working inside the institutions, and also you have to protect the public. So you, you just can't be closing down these towers. That, that would be a, a serious detriment to the city of Oshkosh and also the people working in there. So um, the, the vision statement for the Department of Corrections is they have to protect the community, and you're not doing that when you're shutting down uh, all these towers. They say protect and uh, provide opportunities and promote, inform, and educate, and partner, and all this stuff. And you just can't do that when these towers are being shut down. I'll wrap it up. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for uh, giving me uh, the couple minutes <coughs> that you did. And thank you very much, uh, especially uh, Mr. Herman, for giving me the opportunity to meet with him, talk to him, and present this issue, and letting the city of Oshkosh know that these towers are going to be shut down. And the last thing I have, the very last thing is, you shut it down on third shift, then what's going to happen? Then they're going to shut it down on second. Then they're going to shut it down on first. Where, do, where, where does it stop? You know, thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Did we get his address? Did you get the full address? I didn't get it. So you little bit we have your address, please. 202 Scott Avenue. Okay. Okay, thank you. I think we got the name. Okay, so we have a motion. So <coughs> moved. We need second. Se <coughs> been moved and seconded. Discussion. Mayor, I'd like to yes. to read the resolution. I think it's it's got some pertinent points that I think the citizens of Oshkosh, so the council would bear with me. It only take me a couple of minutes to read the resolution, but I I think it's got some important pieces to it. It it, it as the, um, the sergeant mentioned, it talks about um, the safety and security. So, if I may. Whereas the governor's 2015-17 budget proposes to eliminate as many as 60 state correction officer positions in prison guard towers during third shift hours, and whereas this proposal threatens the safety of staff, inmates, and citizens who live around state correctional settings, including the Oshkosh Correctional Institution, and whereas third shift in prisons are typically operated by smaller crews, which are especially short when staff are called away for unforeseen incidences, leaving parts of the institution unmonitored, making tower, tower staffing all the more important. Whereas using technology to replace tower staff to monitor inmates raises questions about what would happen in cases of technical failure, as well as how this may affect response time in emergencies. Whereas eliminating staff will remove the deterrent effect that staff and towers have on inmates considering escapes. And whereas the citizens of Oshkosh have a reasonable expectation that the state of Wisconsin and the state legislature will adequately staff the Oshkosh Correctional Institution and take necessary precautions to protect neighborhoods and the residents as well as, as, well as the inmates themselves. And whereas the loss of these positions will have a negative impact on the Oshkosh economy as the eliminated positions will lower overall compensation and result in the movement of skilled employees out of the Oshkosh area. Now therefore, be it resolved, that the Common Council of the City of Oshkosh goes on record in opposition to the plan to eliminate 60 correctional officer positions and urges the Joint Committee on Finance to reject these budget reductions due to their detrimental impact on safety, security, and the economy, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution shall be sent to Joint Committee on Finance members, Representative Gordon Hintz, Representative Michael Schra, and other <coughs> members of the Joint Committee on Finance Senator Rick Gudex, as well as other state area legislators. Thank you. Other comments, questions? Okay, ask clerk, take the roll call vote on, uh, we got 15-178. Hanski? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. 
Okay, it takes us to uh, pending ordinance, ordinance 15-199. I'll read it. If you'd like to comment on it, please come forward. So ordinance 15-199, approval of time limit, permit, and lease parking enforcement hours in municipal parking lots. See no one come forward or bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. We moved and seconded. Discussion. Just one comment I said on the Parking Utility Commission. Uh, we voted in favor of this. Um, this puts all our parking lots in conforming. Uh, we had some lots that had different hours, different uh, situations. This puts all the parking lots in a permanent position so that whether you park in one lot or the other, the rules are the same. Okay. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'll ask the clerk to take the roll call vote on resolution 15 199. Pansky? Aye. Fitzgerald? Aye. Cummings? Aye. Peck? Aye. Herman? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Tower? Aye. Carried seven. Okay, it takes us to new resolutions. Uh, first resolutions, resolution 15 200, approve agreement with the Oshkosh Opera House Foundation, Inc., for lease and operation of the Grand Opera House. Anybody like to come forward to speak to that? Before I speak, uh, I'd like to apologize to the council. I forgot to uh, omit it, uh, introduce myself at the time I spoke before. So I will introduce myself and give my address now. Uh, Gary Gray, 815 West Linwood. Um, <clears throat> it's it looking at the member in regards to this resolution, I was a little bit uh, confused, I guess, is uh, in regards to where the funding of this would be coming from uh, with this new contract. Uh, previously, uh, uh, the city has 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 uh, invested some uh, room tax money into the Opera House, and I was just wondering: is uh, the new contract going to be funded by the uh, room tax or by general? Levy. Mr. Roloff, want to comment on that? Uh, yeah, it'll continue to be room tax funded. It just won't be formula driven anymore. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Al Hartman, 2425 Patriot Lane. Uh, tonight representing the Oshkosh Opera House Foundation Board of Directors. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, encouraging you to approve the lease agreement uh, that you have in front of you. You know, our organization for 25 years has managed the Opera House on your behalf for the citizens of, of Oshkosh. Hundreds of thousands of students have participated and, and been in audiences in the Grand uh, over those 25 years. In fact, just this last year we had 10,000 students who were impacted by the programs we sponsored. Tens of thousands of students have acted on, on stage over the last 25 years. We've had thousands of our citizens Act, citizen actors uh, performing on stage as well. The symphony, UW Oshkosh, uh, Oshkosh community players, hysterical productions, as, as well as others. And audiences have been you know, nearly a million over 25 years. This last year, we used the building for uh, 270 days, uh, and 250 days, 170 days of which were events that were open to the public. The other days were private meetings, rehearsals, other sorts of activities. We've had nine directors uh, over those 25 years, with our current director, Joe Furlo, serving the longest. During that time, hundreds of our local citizens, some of the most respected people in Oshkosh, have served on the board. You know, but despite the changes in that leadership, there's been one constant, and that is to preserve the legacy of that building by using it to provide performances to our citizens of Oshkosh. I hope you'll approve the lease. Uh, we certainly have heard some of your concerns. Uh, we have instituted greater control. Some of those we had instituted before the discussions began, but some after because of the concerns you've raised. Uh, we, we will give to you and the citizens of Oshkosh all the improvements that we made uh, to create the Grand Lounge uh, and the associated materials with that. The, coolers and the sinks and the bar. We look forward to building a, a continue to building our relationship with the council and to continue to offer programs and services to uh, students uh, and to be a place where our citizen actors and where our students can perform 
for the citizens of Oshkosh. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Trump, will you take a seat up? Seat up closer <coughs> there, please. Uh, I know there are going to be some questions. So. Bob Cornell, 548 West Smith. As a longtime financial supporter and season ticket holder, uh, I applaud what's being done with the two-year lease versus the five-year lease. I think it's difficult to uh, evaluate performance over a five-year period where a two-year period is much better. It's more like a performance evaluation in a corporation. Uh, you've got time to look at a short term and a time to evaluate with sh short-term memories, not long-term memories. Uh, I applaud the grand board. Uh, I think the programs that they're bringing have been fantastic. My wife and I were there Saturday for Theodore Roosevelt. I think that was one of the most interesting, historical and hysterical, with the comedy that was involved with something that's serious. And, and getting a better look at, at a great American and a president of this country. And as long as those programs keep on coming, I know we are totally going to support it. So as a citizen, help them out. and. and support this ordinance. Thank you. Anybody else like to come forward? Seeing none, I will bring it back to the council for a motion and a second. So moved. Second. second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, discussion. <coughs> I'm going to let Mr. Herman start. Mr. Herman asked me if he could have some extra time. Which I said yes. Thank so you, Mr. Mayor. Herman, I'll let you start and then Appreciate we'll, we'll that. go from there. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Herman, would you come back up, please? I'm holding a letter that was dated August 18, 2009, signed by that time President James R. Macy, pledging to the city of Oshkosh $250,000 for when the roof was replaced at the grant. Uh, I was dated, uh, I say August 18, 2009. As of today, um, financials show that you, you've only paid back $40,000 of that $250,000 <laughs> pledge. In the next two years, what is the foundation's plans to reimburse the city of Oshkosh the rest of the money? Well, for the next two years, you already have in the, in the lease agreement that we're going to pay $25,000 a year each. But that's taxpayer money, right? No. It's room tax dollars is taxpayer dollars, correct? It, it, it is. And it, the agreement back when Mr. Free was a city manager was to not make the grand um, be a burden to the taxpayers of the city of Oshkosh. But yet the Grand Opera House Foundation says it's okay that we withdraw $25,000 of the money that you get in room tax to cover an obligation that your board agreed to back in 2009. Mr. Herman, we'd, we'd be happy to take that out of the, the lease agreement. You put that in the lease agreement. We did not. Well, how else do we get the money then that you pledged if we don't take the room tax that you're going to be getting? You're actually getting 100 and eighty-three thousand five hundred dollars, but because we feel, I just don't think that the taxpayers of Oshkosh or the surrounding taxpayers should be paying off a pledge that your organization agreed to help fund the grant. Well, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. We would, we had, we had already planned for this spring to develop and create a way to pay the city back, and we were going to come to the city and ask for another couple of years to pay that off. We had already talked about increasing ticket prices. We, are, we, al we allocate $1 per ticket right now. We, we talked about for next year increasing that to two or possibly three. But once that was included in the lease agreement, then we viewed that as well. We still may have to increase ticket prices, but to help cover operational costs. So We're happy to swap that out. I mean, if you want to, if you want to include that in the 185 and then tell us we have to pay you another you know 25 you know we'll do that okay so so the citizen taxpayer that goes to grand pays a dollar of the ticket price to come back to the city and yet so then only 40,000 people have attended functions in the last five years or since uh, July 1st of 2010 only 40,000 people have well, it, attended it was, functions at the grant. Well, it hasn't paid been for tickets. Well, it hasn't been. That didn't include this year yet. I mean, it, that was the last last four years. Okay. Um, and I, you know, Joe is here. If you want, I I don't have the numbers of yeah. actual number of bodies and seats right. uh, over the last five years. Okay. And um, if I may, excuse me, if I may, 
the pledge was for up to $250,000. It was accepted by the city of Oshkosh that it was a pledge for up to $250,000. It was never set in stone. Excuse me, Mr. Mayor, but I, I want to make sure, I, I I wanna make sure that we understand. I want to make sure that we understand. I've given the floor, I've given the floor to Mr. Herman, and there will be plenty of time for other council members. But, Mr. Herman, I appreciate it if you kind of move through these yep. two. Yep. Thank you. Um, I guess another question I have is, you stayed on your business plan, your business model since for the 25 years that the uh, Opera House has operated the grant on behalf of the city, which I totally appreciate, and I am a supporter of the arts. I have bought season tickets over the years. Um, this has nothing to do with uh, not supporting the arts in Oshkosh, but your financials show that you haven't broke even only two out of the last 20 years. You're now being capped on the support that the city is going to give uh, give you what are the I guess I'm just looking for because no one from the grant has called me no one has talked to me uh, normally when we have issues like this we get phone calls emails of you know support us we appreciate it um, we need you etc I guess what the gap that is going to happen now because last year there was 212,000 I believe just what are the plans to generate more revenue and offset your deficits because your budgets sure. are bad yeah well one thing we're, we're cutting costs you know we we're down one position and well we're not going to fill that position with the same kind of person we did before that will be a significant reduction in our in our costs in terms of increasing revenue arts as I said we talked about increasing ticket prices we've also had conversations about holding some special events that would be designed primarily to uh, raise money uh, to pay back the city whether it be a uh, you know a special event you know using the the Opera House Square in the summer when we don't have a lot of things going on but we have talked about ways to help increase our payment rate back to the city and to help our own budget balance better I'll give up my time now Mayor. may have a couple uh, questions uh, later. Mr. Peck sorry go ahead all right, as, as I indicated before, the agreement that was accepted by the city of Oshkosh was for up to $250,000. Now, had that agreement come before current council, I don't think it would have been approved the way it was. But the grant has lived up to the commitment of trying to facilitate the payments of that $250,000 pledge. The roof on the grant, it is a city-owned building. Without replacing that roof, that building would not be usable. It would not be in the condition it is. It may not be there right now. We replace roofs on our library. We replace roofs on our museum. Those are all city-owned buildings. Those are city-operated buildings. So there is taxpayer support that goes to those particular facilities. This is a very unique building it is a very unique operation in that the city owns the building there is a private organization that runs it for us I would dare this council to turn the library over in a similar situation where we own the building and turn it over to a private organization to run the same thing with our museum thank you other comments yes I'm in approval of the, the lease as it is this evening, so that, that's not a problem with me. I just think going forward, we all need to learn how to communicate, work a little bit better together. As, as a council, I know we want to see fundraising efforts from the grant. We really want you to step up to the plate and make sure that this is a priority and to come back to us and tell us what you're doing and keep us up to date, keep us informed. That, that's all we're asking. Oh, and I think that that's a fair what comment. I would like to do. Absolutely, and and we we wish to do that as well. Uh, it is our hope that we'll engage in more conversations with the council, uh, where we can have a workshop and talk about <coughs> the the philosophy of the grant. The Even just coming here, sure, that, you know, simple enough. Sure, you know where we are. Where to find us? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. Lastly, okay. Um, lastly, um, you know, it, it was said earlier this evening <coughs> that no one from the Grand Opera House Foundation Board has reached out to Council. My question is, has Council reached out to the Grand Opera House Foundation Board? I have. I have expressed my concerns to the Grand Opera House Foundation Board. Mr. Hartman and I have had many conversations. Mr. Hartman has heard 
as well as the Grand Opera House Foundation Board. They have heard the concerns of this council. And as Mr. Hartman indicated, they are taking the steps to address the concerns that this council has. This is not a one-way street. Council persons, not only do they need to hear from the community, they also need to reach out to the community. If you are not hearing something and you have a concern, it is incumbent upon you as a council person to reach out and get the information to ask the questions that you have instead of litigating it in public. Thank you. And I support this wholeheartedly. Other comments or questions? Yeah, Ms. Um, just Alice Mosby. Thank you. Um, just a question I have moving forward uh, for this year and then possibly even looking into next year How many like outside acts outside of you know the city of Oshkosh the school district as well as um, the community theater the symphony? How many actual performances do we have booked? Going forward say from May 1st to the end of the year and do we have anything for next year? You know, I don't know the answer to that question uh, our, our We're looking for the answer to the question, person best mm -hmm. able to answer it. Joe Furlow, President and CEO of the Oshkosh Opera House Foundation, Director of the Grand Opera House. Thank you. Uh, booking a series is uh, runs in a calendar similar to a school district year. So when we're talking about next year, uh, for us, it is July 1 through next June 30th. It's typically done uh, in, uh, in the spring. And at this time of year, in a normal year, I would probably have significant discussions with artists uh, and agents for about 15 to 20 outside acts, counting the school performances and the two or three series that we offer. Standard artist contract specifies that we have a lease for the facility that we own for the time that we're contracting the artist. So the answer to your question is I'm unable to sign a contract right now because I don't have a lease. If you're asking me, do I have a lease and it's signed, how quickly will I move to, to, to book events? Uh, as quickly as the good deal arrives. One of the real uh, challenges of doing business here at the Grand is often you have to wait and you play a big waiting game, waiting for routing, waiting for favorable tours of artists so that it becomes favorable for the artist to work at a price that we can afford with a 600 seat theater and a ticket ceiling that's relatively low. That waiting game sometimes goes well into the next year. Uh, our largest event uh, last month when Jim Belushi uh, arrived and toured with us, I booked six weeks prior because I had to wait for the right deal uh, and the right sponsor, to be honest. Um, so there are always additions uh, to, to go along with things uh, like that. Um, there have been concerns raised that we're waiting too long. And I would just remind this council, who, uh, none of whom were here uh, serving in this particular role, when I arrived here 11 years ago, uh, I started work in June without a season and booked a rather successful first season. Uh, it can be done. It, it certainly can be done, especially uh, with an experienced uh, arts administrator uh, working the field. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to anticipate whether, whether you're, you're concerned that we don't have acts or whether you're simply asking the question. If you're asking the question, would we have booked none? Uh, outside, of, we've, we've made all of our commitments to the local groups <coughs> and the schools uh, that that require you know to know in their schedules for their own calendars. They all have their dates. They've all uh, we, we're in the process of informing them. This is the time of year when we would normally do that. But if they were to call us right now, we'd say, "Well, we've got your dates." Um, as far as the outside events, I can't sign a contract yet. Um, perhaps next week I can. And. Uh, I have tentative agreements. Certainly the school, the school shows are the most competitive. The Discovery Series shows are the most competitive with, with other things in our region. Uh, those, are, those are instances where we're not looking for routing. We're looking to avoid routing with other uh, show, uh, venues in the region. Um, so we have inquiries out. We have what's called in my business pencil holds. I have a date on my calendar penciled in. 
The artist has a date. We have a number agreed upon, but we can't do any paperwork yet. So the answer to your question is none. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, by school shows, by school shows, what you mean? <clears throat> discovery series. We bring artists in. It's not that the schools are presenting. It's we bring outside artists in, and they spend a week with the school system uh, and students throughout Oshkosh, uh, learning to do the thing that whatever that artist can do. So that's <coughs> what you mean, because I know you were talking about not the school system, but this is really for the school system. Other comments? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Mr. Joe. Oh, go ahead. Oh, did, did you ask? I just wanted to respond to something that Mr. Oh. Furlow pointed out. Yeah. Um, and this has always existed in the agreement, <coughs> and I would encourage you that you may and you can under this agreement book events. No, you're going to, this is any dates booked by the foundation during this lease term or any extension thereof shall be honored by the city. We have an obligation. You have the ability. This binds us to honor your agreement and our interpretation has always been that you may enter into those agreements. I appreciate that, but that doesn't mean an artist is going to sign a contract. Uh, we don't need to argue about this, Joe. Okay. I'm telling you, you have that ability okay. in the agreement right now. Okay. Folks, okay. we're going a little <laughs> different directions here. We're going here and here, so let's. Other questions? I, yeah. Mr. May, and, yeah. I, and I, I don't have any questions for, for, for either uh, Mr. Furlow or Mr. Hartman, but. Um, I, you know, I, I think I think it's important for the citizens to know. I mean, there has been discussions of this for the last several months. They've they've <coughs> seen it on their agendas. Uh, you know, there's there's a, a lot of there's a lot of city dollars that are at stake, a lot of road tax dollars, and this has been a, a heavy discussion. I have had an opportunity to reach out to a variety of the board members. I've had some one-on-one -on -one discussions with Mr. Hartman. Um, I've I've had some other board members who who haven't responded to me, um, but uh, in in my conversations with Mr. Hartman. Um, you know, we've talked about some issues, and, and he's he's identified some remedies, and and, and uh, as we, it, it sounds as if there's some forward motion in addressing some of those remedies. Ultimately, um, I, and I've I've said this before, when when the uh, council was approving the extension to the last lease, my my business that I own has a, a relationship with the Grand Opera House. We produce the uh, the playbills for it, and uh, given that relationship, even though even though we provide those playbills at no cost. Um, you know, we do we do obtain some revenue for that, and, and the, the Grand Opera House gets uh, uh, ten thousand playbills. And as a result, I'm, I'm going to have to vote present on this. Okay. Other comments? I have a couple Chairman? questions, um, Mr. Furlow. You you guys have mentioned historical productions. You've mentioned community players. You've mentioned some of the other. Who are your community partners? We have three. Uh, what we've re referred to as arts partners. Each of them has a reciprocal agreement with the Opera House Foundation. The first was the Oshkosh Symphony Orchestra some five years ago, maybe even longer. It was before the roof. Uh, the idea uh, when we first broached that was to reach a partnership with those organizations who weren't inspired necessarily to bring their uh, events to the Grand. The symphony at the time was performing primarily in Alberta Kimball Auditorium. Um, we wanted them in-house, and we worked out a deal uh, where they would provide us services. Um, sometimes it was, uh, it's, sometimes it's workshop, uh, sometimes it's uh, entertainment for reception, sometimes it's, well, the most important thing that they do is that each of those organizations is that they agree to be part of our subscription series, which means that they agree to the discounts that become available to people who buy multiple shows at the Grand, whether it's part of a series, whether it's part of the symphony, whether it's part of the community players, whether it's part of hysterical productions. That adds about three, four, five opportunities for the ticket buyer to save money on their ticket by buying uh, and purchasing tickets in advance. We're actually the first in the state to do that, uh, and now there are others kind of pursuing that along the way. Symphony was the first. The second was the community players. And uh, we, we pursued with them, I would say it was 2010, it was after we reopened, the idea that they would take their three show series. They had previously been doing uh, fewer. They'd been uh, going through a period of less activity uh, in the community. And we invested some time and, and effort and resource. Uh, we let them use the building for rehearsal on days that, uh, that it's not in use for other uh, events. Um, 
until they get to the point where they get to production week like everyone else, then they pay rent just like everyone else. Um, again, the big trade-off is that when we do an event like the Grand Scoop or, uh, or something public, you're going to find one of those groups there with volunteers who are helping us by face painting or doing something along the way uh, to make that happen. So it's been a trade of services uh, for services. And uh, the most important benefit has always been the reduction in ticket prices uh, for, uh, for purchasers of series and description events. The third of those uh, organizations is the newest. That's Hysterical Productions, uh, who have three shows uh, on our series this year. Their uh, reciprocal agreement started uh, two, two seasons ago, because uh, they weren't formed prior to that. That group was formed uh, as a result of uh, our wanting to do something special, uh, something that became the Spirits of the Grand Tour. Uh, and that actually incubated uh, a new organization, which then became uh, our third partner. So there are, the answer to your question is there are three. Okay. Um, you get room tax dollars. Do you partner at all with any of the hotels in the area for package deals of tickets to rooms to, you know, do you work with the convention? Uh, well, our biggest convention partner. Visitors Bureau uh, to help when conventions come in Oshkosh and open the door for other activities Besides those three groups that you just mentioned. To, to quote Mr. Peck, that's a two-way street, and you know, uh, I, you know, you're asking publicly what you've asked privately. Let's 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 be forthcoming about this to those who are right. watching on television. So you know this answer as you ask this question. Uh, the answer is we probably haven't done as well on either side communicating with each other uh, and how we might be able to help each other. And certainly, whether it's room tax or not room tax, the Convention and Visitors Bureau and the Grand the Opera House Foundation. We need to do a better job of communicating better and seeing what we can do. That's, that's the true answer to the question uh, in the context that you're asking it. The, uh, the other partnership we have with hotels, though, and it gives me an opportunity actually to shout out the WHD group, which for the 10, 11 years that I've been here, uh, have provided housing, significant housing, for every artist who visits Oshkosh and has done it as a donation to the Opera House Foundation. So it's a different sort of partnership and a different sort of communication. But if you're asking, can we do better? Of course we can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Allison, I'll see. Um, yeah, I had just, just a couple of comments. Um, you know, certainly, um, you know, uh, Mr. Cummings and I did meet with um, multiple board members. Uh, we had an opportunity to meet in session. Um, we certainly uh, were able to t discuss some of the, the issues that were concerning to not only council, uh, but of course also, you know, the citizens of Oshkosh as well. Um, as well as I did talk to another board member separately. From a standpoint of, you know, my perspective of some of the, the serious issues are, you know, are they being and will they be addressed as quickly as I would hope? I'm, I'm not 100% confident in that. Um, to be honest, I think when we look at this and being elected as a steward of the taxpayer dollar, it's not really an emotional decision. We unfortunately are tasked with making a very, very business logical decision um, when it comes to what is the return of investment on those dollars. I'm a huge supporter of the Grand. I think it's one of the coolest buildings we own um, here in Oshkosh, and I certainly don't want to see anything happen to it. Um, certainly, I, and I do appreciate the years of partnership with the foundation, um, but I don't know that necessarily the agreement which leaves it just between the city of Oshkosh and the foundation board is necessarily in the best interest of the taxpayer. Um, but I did want to put that out there that, you know, there has been contact by, um, you know, council members and the board as well as citizens of Oshkosh and businesses, you know, also reaching out to council members as well. So I just okay. wanted to clarify. Any other comments? I can make a few final comments. I, I very much support this at this point. We've been working through it, and there have been some difficult issues. We're, we're all aware of that. It's no secret when we've had uh, closed sessions, which are appropriate closed sessions to have when we're dealing with the contract over time. And there have been some issues. And over time, we've gone a lot of back and forth. I've been talked to board members and, and gone back and forth several times. I support it. One thing I do want to clarify is, yes, we are supporting it with some tax dollars. In fact, there's a 182,000 in that. They may or may not come directly before it was it was done by uh, uh, the dollars with the room tax directly and was tied to actually a formula. And in the contract, the way it's written now, the city's pledging 183,000 of taxpayer support, which I do support, 183,000 
a year. Uh, we have reduced that by 25,000, and that's in essence the reduction is is we're requiring you to make that up through your fundraising. So that 25,000, I do believe, you're being forced to make up. Uh, also, the money from the room tax in the future will be coming to the city to be part of the general pot of the city. So it's obviously that's money coming in that can be used in this way or, or other ways. So I think we need to clarify that to some point. Also, that 25,000, we've already reduced and taken 25,000 out from what we were going to allocate, and you guys are going to have to make that up in terms of, of, of your budget. I think the grant, we do own the grant. It's a property that I think is important in this city. Um, I think we've tried to work through this contract in a, in a number of ways that, that can work for both sides. We've let, limited it to two years, so we can kind of force that communication, as, as was indicated before by Mr. Cornell. Two years is better than five years on this, because we do have some issues, and that's, that's <coughs> important to stay on top of those issues over the two years rather than wait five in the situation we got ourselves into this, this time. So I support it. I think the grant's important. I think this contract's important. I think there's an understanding that things have to be a little different in the future, that, uh, not a little different, but different in the future than that. they've been in the past, all the way from the communication that was mentioned to actually uh, uh, reporting and interaction between the council and the grand board. So I will support it. Yes. Um, just one last comment in regards to that. Um, I w would like to have seen um, the grand foundation come up with a plan versus we came up with a plan um, which really at the end is really kind of in my opinion uh, a smoke and mirrors to manipulate numbers to somehow you know pay us back and I do see where I you're coming from and then I know we will we'll respectfully disagree on that but the ultimate point is we unfortunately almost have to force a plan that had to be originated um, by the council in order to see you know a return on that it would have been it would have been phenomenal if we would have seen that from from the board I'd agree up to a point no, we're we're forcing to a degree but they got to perform on that 25,000 to, to get it back up right? mayor okay I, then we're gonna if I could just make one couple comments um, thank you um, I get it we're the owners of the building and the Grand Opera House Foundation and Mr. Frillo are the operators. I get that. Um, kind of to Council Member Allison Osby's comments about you know them um, coming up with that. Um, the transparency, the partner of all users, equal and bringing quality. I mean, we had to make so many changes in the contract to get this agreeable. Um, you know, Mr. Peck mentioned about Council reaching out. I agree. Um, <coughs> But it's hard to reach out when you go on your board site and all you get is their business address. You don't get a phone number. You don't get an email. I mean, I can call their business. I get it. But, you know, people work. And I think that, um, you know, a little more transparency of being able to contact the board because the only contact information is Mr. Furlow. Now, I get it. He is the CEO and president. Um, and, and, and he should be the contact guy. But maybe citizens want to talk to a board of director. Um, and not call their business while they're working. Um, there's been a lot of great people on there, from Mr. Macy to Mr. Johnson, Ron Johnson, Senator. Um, they've done good, good stuff and done great stuff in Oshkosh. And it, it's really what we want at the Grand Opera House to be, community-used resource. And that's been happening. But they don't even break even. They don't even break even. And going back to what I said earlier they when the foundation came on board uh, city manager mr. free didn't want the taxpayer to supplement their operations and that's what we're doing and I believe and uh, we're just kicking the can down the road because they're not going to be able to make the numbers work and we may get our pledge and it was a pledge, I get it, but I believe that the council back in 09 voted in favor of it because they felt the Grand Opera House Foundation was going to follow through with their pledge and that we weren't going to have to ask the taxpayer to help pay the pledge back. And so I'm very disappointed in that. And it will be until the clerk asks me to vote whether I'm going to go yes or no. So I, I, I just think that um, we're going to be here two years. Somebody on the council is going to be here two years. It might be me if I choose to 
still be on council and run and get elected by the taxpayers. But um, I think we're going to be back here because I don't think their bottom line is going to match up with the money they're getting. So thank you. Okay. Any further comments? Well, no. okay. You know, you know, I, I um, regarding contacting the board of directors, um, uh, Mr. Herman has been discussing the Oshkosh Convention and Visitors Bureau. Um, I do not see a the ability to contact the Oshkosh Convention and Visitors Bureau board of directors uh, on their website either. So, <coughs> um, you know, I hate to go tit for tat, but um, facts are facts, and we'll go from there. Thank you. But I do support the extension of this lease. Okay, I want to take the roll call vote of the council. Pansky. Aye. Fitzgerald. Present. Cummings. Aye. Peck. Aye. Herman. No. Allison Osby. No. Tower. Aye. Carried four, two, one present. Okay, thank you. I look forward to or have to look forward to the next couple of years and we'll look forward to communication and moving forward from here. So thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Okay, that takes us to council discussion, direction of the city manager, and future agenda items. Go EDC update. Uh, nothing to report. We did the introductions this evening, so I have nothing to report at this time. Okay, so we're up and moving with Go EDC now. We're yes, very beginning much. Beginning so. of the staff and moving <coughs> forward. Thanks. Future agenda items workshop to review health insurance program date. The idea is when the, the new council gets seated, we will plan a date uh, for that. Uh, the council just uh, picked up the, or awarded a new contract to a new insurance consultant. First uh, order of business with them will be to prepare for that workshop. And once the new council is seated, we'll pick a date that's agreeable to everybody for that workshop. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next two items, 44 and 45, I'm actually going to reverse here. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> first of all, council compensation. Council compensation is always a, a tough thing to take a look at because there, there are some rules that relate to it and it's never an easy thing to talk about, particularly since the council has to do it at some point in time. So I'm the one that's going to bring it up because I won't be here in a, eight days. So I, I do want to bring it up and I'll make a suggestion regarding it. Um, that is, I think the last time it was changed was about 207 went into effect in 208. Is yes, that correct? 2008. 2008. If the council makes any change during the next year, it can't go into effect till 2017, effectively, because you can't vote on something that affects what your salary could be as a council member. So that's that's about a nine-year a nine-year period, and I think nine-year period is a time to to look at compensation and see whether or not some changes ought to be made, uh, maybe even sooner than that. But I, I think it ought to be looked at, and in kind of preparation, possible preparation. Mr. Herman, I also talked with City Manager Roloff, and the one thing we asked for was was uh, compensation that council members and mayors get in other communities, both our size and other sizes. And I believe all council members have received a copy of that. And when you review that, I think it indicates that the council compensation here is probably a bit out of line. How much that's going to be for the council to determine. I'm going to bring it up because I won't be here, and so it's, it's harder for others. I didn't want to bring it up before the election because then it would have become an election item that I, I don't think was fair, would have been fair to either one of you to have to deal with as an election item. But my suggestion is that, uh, 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 that, that our new mayor appoint a couple of council members maybe to look at it and work with the city manager and maybe make a suggestion to the council. If you guys want to forget about it, that's fine, but I, I think it's time to do it, and it should be done, and it's the appropriate thing to do, and to look at some adjustments. So I'd suggest that you take the information, look at it. I, I think there are some things that come out of the data. Most things, when you get enough information or enough data, the answer begins to <coughs> fall out, and I think there's enough there that there are going to be some things that will fall out. So if you and somebody else start a little bit on it before, so that's my suggestion. No further than that. I do think it's time, and I think it's appropriate uh, for council members. They put it in an awful lot of time and a lot of energy and also spend a good deal of their own money, both not only getting elected, but doing things. There's not expenses in the council. But and for a few males. And, and Mr. Mayor, if I could just say also, I mean, we, we say this and, and not necessarily for the compensation of the people that are serving now or are going to be serving the next term that were recently elected, but, but really, uh, you know, one of the reasons to look at that issue is to attract um, some 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 bright talented people to to run for office down the road as well and and it, it, there could be some question right now whether or not that compensation is a deterrent for people 
to invest the time and, and other resources in their life. Again, I'll reinforce the idea. You don't run it for council that reason, but you at least ought to have some ability to, to cover some cost and get a meal every now and then. Right. Extra. So, okay, thank you for the comment. To, so, to that, I'll, Mayor, I'll leave. Yep. You know, to that, um, you know, to add a little, I don't feel a little fire or how you want to put it, but on the average in our survey that we did and, and looked at, um, council spends roughly 600 plus hours a year uh, between council meetings, their board and commissions, to being invited to events, and and just you know today we were invited to I think it was two or three more events. Um, so it, it it is a very time consuming, and and again to the mayor's point, it, you don't get on city council for the compensation side, but yet we're quite a ways away from what cities our side and communities that have a city manager form of government. And um, I think it is time to uh, put that in there. And I know talking with Mr. Roloff, he even mentioned of like a rollover that it gets reviewed every so many years so that it does take that little bit of issue away from council because it is a tough topic to talk about compensation. Because the only thing we get besides that little stipend is an email address. We don't have an office. We don't have a phone number. We don't have any place to meet with citizens other than the local restaurant or uh, wherever. Um, so, you know, not like some of the bigger cities where they have an office and they have, I know the mayor's gotten calls at home and his wife has been said, are you the mayor's secretary? <laughs> hey. So, I mean, I'm just saying, we're not looking for something huge. We're not looking for something big, but to Mr. Fitzpatrick's comment, or Fitzgerald, excuse me, um, maybe that's one of the reasons why we're not getting enough candidates for boards, commissions, and they don't get paid, but council and, and, and that type of thing because the time commitment has gotten bigger and bigger all the time. So okay. I don't want to get into a debate tonight. I wanted to bring it up so it was clear it was being brought up outside the council. So if you could maybe point a group or if, if, if you think it wise, if not, you can throw the idea away. I think oh. it's, very, it's very good idea. <laughs> Okay, the, la the last thing here, th this is my last meeting a after the last 11 years. Um, so I just wanted to do uh, a few thank yous at, at this last meeting, because it'll be very brief next week, really won't have, have a chance to, and there's some people here. So uh, a number of thank yous, I have lots of thank yous. You, you know, when you're kind of in a leadership role, that you know, some of the most important words that you have, one is please, and I've been using please for the last 11 years, so then you got to get to the point where you say thank you. So, pleased to these people over here an awful lot so now it, now comes time for some of the thank yous you, you got to be able to use those those words and so now uh, uh, for the thank yous uh, uh, first of all to the council people the current council members and other council members that have served with me over the years haven't always been of the same opinion but I've always appreciated working with people we spend a lot of time together <coughs> we've had some fun together on the shows and yet we've taken up some serious matters uh, and we've worked through them uh, successfully uh, and uh, um, I've, I've always appreciated different perspectives and I've, I've changed my mind about a number of things. I've learned a lot from all the council members, so I'm appreciative to all the council members and for speaking up and giving me their ideas and, and this group pretty much so for, for the support I've had in, in, in the role as mayor, so I'm most appreciative of you. I'm also appreciative to all the employees of the city. The employees work hard for the city and they work, work hard for us up here and we don't always get a chance to, to say thank you. So employees, uh, uh, I want to thank you. I also want to thank uh, the, the department heads in particular because we ask a lot of questions. We go in and take their time. We call and there's something on the agenda on Friday night and Monday morning. We come in and interrupt their Monday morning if they have something busy to do. And, and they, they respond in a very positive way with, with, with honest answers and, and, and always with respect. So I, I very much appreciate the department heads and all that they've done for us regardless of what they might say when we're not there. <laughs> as the case may be. <laughs> I'm sure there's been a couple of comments once or twice about one or more of us, but, but it is appreciated. You've always shown us respect and you've always provided what we've asked for, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the people that have been up here, and I want to say thanks to the four of you. I mean, you've, you know, uh, two of you have spent uh, almost 300 meetings on Tuesday nights with me. Uh, Dave, who's retiring, congratulations and, and good luck to you in your retirement, and, and Pam. Uh, 11 years keeping me straight on the votes and all those kinds of things in the council so thank you and, 
and Lynn and, and Mr. Roloff since he's come to town, and there were two individuals before that, Mr. Wolank and uh, uh, Mr. Kraft, uh, who I, I'd also pass out a thank you to. They were all always supportive and, and helpful and helped us get through what we needed to get through. Because this is this is a lot of time for you folks. We talk about the time here, but you folks have jobs to do during the day and come out. So that's appreciated. Also appreciate the, the citizens uh, for supporting me uh, through six <coughs> elections. I'm appreciative of that. Uh, it's been an honor to serve on the council, but particularly been an honor to serve as mayor. I don't understand why there aren't more candidates for council and why there aren't more candidates for mayor. We had good candidates for mayor, but I, I think, I mean, you know, it, it's really neat to say you're, you're mayor of a city of 67,000 people. That's it. It's something I, I take great pride in. I, you know, I'm very honored. I very, feel very privileged. I feel humbled. Every day is not a wonderful day. I must admit that there have been <laughs> some days that have been a little a little tougher, some meetings. But, but I, I'm very thankful that I've been given an opportunity, and I feel that I've been given an opportunity. Uh, I'm also thankful for the fact so many people out there in the community have worked with us as a council, with the city, uh, with me. I think we've accomplished a, a lot of great things working together over the last 11 years. We've we've faced some significant challenges, as I said the night of the uh, state of the city. Uh, I think there are two things I'm particularly pleased with over the 11 years that I've been involved with this. Number one is I think the, I think the needle has moved in this community. There was a letter to the editor today in the paper. I don't know how many people read the Northwestern today? A letter to the editor that happened to play up on, on those two pieces. The, the needle switched back when it first came on the council. There was much more negativity within the community. I mean, there's always different perspectives, and we, we all buy into that. But. But there was more negativity both from, from the press and, and, and at times in the community. And, and sometimes the needle was, was, was not in, in the positive direction. I, I think that's, that's moved over time considerably. The other thing is I appreciate the way people have come together in the community over the past several years. Groups have come out, as I said, out of some silos in some cases and, and work together and realize that we can accomplish so much more. So I, th I, I think we're in great, great shape. There are lots of challenges out there. Lots of things to do. We noticed one challenge here tonight. We, we got into a, a bit tonight. Uh, but I'm confident if people are willing to work together and be positive and look for the positive outcomes, that, that things are going to be great for the city of Oshkosh. So again, thanks to all. I appreciate it. I feel indebted to all. So thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Tower, thank you. Mr. Tower, I think there's one person you forgot. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Well, there's probably you, more than you, one. I've got to thank Andy, too, back there. Andy, he, <laughs> Andy and his group. But well, I, I think who, there's somebody there? a little more important if you want to get back in the house tonight. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> you know, that's funny, because the last thing she said to me when I walked out the door was, are you going to wave? <laughs> <laughs> and wave Well, go ahead, <laughs> wave. <laughs> you, you can tug your ear like Carol Burnett. <laughs> I, 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 I think I'm in trouble, and I appreciate Mr. Peck's comment. Chris, thank you for your for all your support, and I also thank the rest of my family. My family has, has been involved in this. So you're, you're exactly right, because you can't do it without. You need that support, and when, when the world feels like it's against you, it's always the one place you can go, is you can go home, and suddenly you feel good again. So I'm appreciative. Again, hi, Chris, uh, and thank you. Uh, with, with that said, uh, Mr. Tower, um, my relationship with, go, with you goes back to um, sometime in the 70s when you were on the Titan Booster Club. I don't know if you remember this, but oh, yeah. I worked a track meet with you um, years and years ago. Uh, I thank you for your uh, service to the community, and I think I speak for the whole council in thanking you for the 11 years of your service on council, as well as all of the other things you have done for this community in your time in Oshkosh. So thank you very much. Thank you. All that so <laughs> <laughs> let's get on and so get that back to the agenda citizen <coughs> statements to the council uh, if anybody would like to come forward talk about something positive or negative please come up to the microphone I repeated the rules for the last several years so I'm not going to go over them this last time I'll re repeat them <laughs> once tonight and nobody looks like they're flying out of their seats so uh, we'll move on to the city manager announcements and statements Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, uh, there's a memo in your uh, agenda packet. There were three items on the agenda tonight regarding the Enter Enterprise Resource Program. Uh, one of the purchases is for the workstations <coughs> that we're getting done associated with that. Uh, that's not, um, a, we do that through a cooperative purchase, so I'm just reporting that to council along with the other two items that you approved earlier in the meeting. 
uh, update on the council vacancy. We are still uh, accepting applications in the city clerk's office through Monday at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Um, our goal is to, uh, that was the 30-day uh, notice that's required by our code. Uh, we will compile that information, and when the new council is seated next Tuesday, we'll have the package there for you of applicants to review um, so that you'll have a whole week to review them, and the schedule will be to put that on the agenda for the April 28th meeting unless we unless the council decides otherwise but that's that's been our goal all along so that your first meeting uh, the first uh, the new council's first order of business will be to uh, interview and <coughs> talk to uh, prospective uh, uh, applicants for the vacant council seat and then just a reminder even though it's here uh, organizational meeting is next Tuesday April 21st at noon uh, and uh, we do uh, photographs every other year. This is not a photograph year, so come as you are. Um, and that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yes. Okay, I look for a motion to adjourn. So no, move. Recess. 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 Do we need re oh. recess. Do I need a motion to recess? I need a motion to recess until noon on April 21, 2015. You're still keeping me straight after all this time. So moved. Second. second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Or do we need a roll call vote on that too? I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Are we She's okay? So quick with her. I, okay, so there's no motion to adjourn. A lot of ditto. Thanks again. Thank you.